Bowman here from BW1, and in this video, I want to give you the info that you need to know about the Nexus 6, the Nexus 9, and the Nexus Player. Three new devices announced today, and also Android 5.0 Lollipop was also announced today as well, too. Let's start off with the Nexus 6. So the Nexus 6 is made by Motorola this go around, pretty much probably the last device that Motorola is made under the Google, Google branding here. The reason it's called the Nexus 6 is because it has a near 6 inch quad HD display. It's 5.96 inches quad HD, so you're getting a super high resolution on it. It's also packed some really premium specs. It's something a little bit different coming from the Nexus program where they're going on the high end where they were used to be sort of in the middle of the road. You're getting, uh, like I said, quad core processing inside of it as well too, with a Snapdragon 805 chipset. They didn't say the RAM, but I think it's roughly around 2.5 to 3 gigabytes of RAM or so in between there that you're gonna get. You're also gonna get a 13 megapixel camera with optical image stabilization. So you're gonna get an improved camera that's hopefully gonna take some better pictures for you. The Nexus devices aren't traditionally that good with that. And it's also packing either 32 or 64 gigabytes of storage options with no micro SD card or any type of external storage options, such as a card or anything like that. You can use one of those USB to go devices if you want to expand the storage. Hopefully the Nexus will, uh, 6 will support that. There's also, it's also um, inside of it's going to come with Android 5.0 as well too, but we'll talk about that a little bit more down the road. It comes with a 32, 20 milliamp hour battery. So it's supposed to have some really solid battery life in here. Come from a stock Android device. Not something that stock Android is really known for in terms of battery life and then the Nexus side of things, but we'll see when we get this in hand how this is going to work out. So this is Google's entry into the phablet market and it's very interesting. I'm wondering if this is going to be able to hold up because we know it's going to come with stock Android, so I don't know if it's going to have the software add-ons such as the king of phablets, the note line with sort of things like multi-window and the S Pen, and those little add-ons to really take advantage of that screen size if the Nexus 6 is going to be able to do that, especially at the price point at it's at at $649 starting off. And it's going to be compatible with all carriers, so we know AT&T has announced theirs. I think it's around $50 for theirs on the contract. I know um, they, they mentioned pretty much AT&T, Sprint, Verizon, US Cellular, and yes, including Verizon apparently is going to be able to support the Nexus 6. So that's really cool that you're going to be able to get on any carrier that you want to. Um, like I said, I'm not sure where this sort of is going to lie without those little extra add-ons to try to help with it being a phablet. This is sort of a standard bearer, I kind of think, I think the Nexus 6 is sort of a, they put it out there sort of something standard to put out there for now so that other manufacturers that decide they want to create phablet-like devices or people don't want to make the software that's going to support those type of devices, they can kind of look at that as a standard, you know, because sort of, uh, sort of uh, the Galaxy Note is sort of the flagship bearer. I should say that's a standard where so the Nexus is sort of the stabilizer. I'm gonna get more into that a little bit later because that's kind of interesting where I kind of think where Nexus used to stand and it's kind of not there anymore. But let's uh, move on here and talk about the Nexus 9. So the Nexus 9 is an 8.9 inch tablet made by HTC. One of the unique things is gonna come with HTC Boom Sound and it's gonna be one of the first 64-bit Android devices and it's gonna have a new NVIDIA Tegra, I wanna say T1, I get the name, the, the processor name's kind of confused with NVIDIA a lot, but it's gonna come with a new NVIDIA processor that's quad-core 64-bit enabled as well too. I believe it's quad-core, it might, might be a little bit wrong there, but I'll have the specs on the side here if you guys can see that, but it's gonna come pretty much as a very powerful Android tablet and um, I believe it's coming also coming with the Quad HD display as well too. The um, interesting thing about this, this is sort of, I think their last sort of play into continuing Android tablets. Cause I really think, outside of the Yoga line, which we, if you've seen the Yoga tablet line on Android, which have impeccable battery life and been one of the more popular Android tablets out there, next is sort of the Galaxy line. You're having Windows now coming in the play and that's some full operating system. I think in a lot of ways, it's gonna kind of bump Android tablets sort of out of the way here, especially with you have the Yoga Tablet Pro now coming and the other Yoga Tablets uh, from Lenovo that are coming with coming with uh, Windows as well on there and Windows and Android flavors and Windows you can you just be able to do more with it. So that's gonna be very interesting to see where Android sort of stands in this play. Very good chance that Windows could be a very big disruptor in the tablet market, but nonetheless, it's out there. I'm not the biggest fan of Android tablets, but it's there. And for those that are looking for, and I think I got, I will put the price up here in a little, so I think it's around $599 or so. $499 to $599, I believe, for the, the uh, Nexus 9 tablet. And the last thing, as far as hardware is concerned, which I'm really interested in, is the Nexus Player. The Nexus Player is basically, if you've seen Amazon Fire TV, which we've reviewed before, 
it's pretty much Google's sort of take on that. It's pretty much a little small uh, circular, sort of square box, uh, no box, circular sort of uh, device that you put on the um, put you put on the side. It is wireless. It's going to come with a Intel Atom processor. I believe it's quad core as well too. It's going to have a remote that has voice search enabled with it as well too. You could also buy a game controller, which was something similar you could do with the Fire TV as well too. And it's kind of like sort of. Uh, adding up like if you want a little bit more than what a chromecast offers you because you're still going to be able to to do google casting and stuff like this to this device but it's going to add a little bit more access to the play store access to different applications your favorite apps you just want to stream are going to be on there very very interesting play here and that's roughly i think it's going for about 99 dollars or so so i think that's uh that's a, that, that's something that piques me a little bit more because I think that market of sort of the streaming box is not as stable. Some people say, you know, while the Apple TV sells well, they were kind of one of the first in the market. Same thing with the Roku that was kind of first in the market as well too. I think there is a lot of room there to sort of make things happen. The big three right now is, a, like I said, Apple TV, Roku, and most likely the Chromecast is probably the next big thing. But you have plenty of other devices that do this. You have gaming systems that do this, such as the PS3, PS3, PS4, and also the Xbox One and even Xbox do a lot of your streaming capabilities so getting these little small players is pretty interesting and one thing that I, I do like about them they're gonna really pretty much disrupt and destroy smart TVs that are very slow to get to the market very slow to update and usually come with half the functionality that these little boxes come and you could take any TV and make a smart TV out of it using one of these small little stream boxes so with that being said I, I really am excited about the next players one of the more interesting ones I want to see come out now as far as days of release the Nexus Nine and the Nexus Player are going to be available on October 17th for pre-order, I believe. And the Nexus 6 is supposed to be about pre-order late in October, probably released sometime in November. So that's pretty much it for hardware on the side of things. And also carriers will probably announce their own time. I don't know why I'm waving there. Carriers will announce their own times and such as well too. But so the next thing we want to move on to is Android 5.0 Lollipop interesting name here. It's keeping up with the candy theme. If you guys don't know, that's what Android sort of, Google uses sort of code names for Android we had before. They used to use sort of, um, it's sort of like dessert themes before with, you know, eclair, uh, donut, uh, ice cream sandwich, but they sort of went to Kit Kat and then they went to, they went to Jelly Bean, sorry, Kit Kat and now Lollipop. So sticking to the candy theme here a little bit with it. And with that's gonna come the new material design UI, which is supposed to be pretty good and really supposed to sort of streamline a lot of applications. It's supposed to be a much better Google-like experience or Android-like experience on there. And it's also, also is supposed to come with as well, better battery life and all the other extra functionality there with it. We're gonna have to wait and see until we get our hands on Android 5.0. There was the preview build, develop preview build. We gotta wait till we get the final build to see what, it, see what it's See what we're gonna have coming there with it. In a lot of cases, there's a lot more added on now than from the original developer preview. So it's gonna be interesting to see what that kind of brings to the table and what other manufacturers are gonna take that OS and when they built it into their own skins and, and such for their own devices, how that's gonna work. Speaking of that, we're gonna probably wanna know when we're gonna see releases of Android 5.0. So as far as Nexus devices, Nexus 4, Nexus 6, Nexus 4, 5, 7, and I believe the Nexus 10 are all going to have this available in the coming weeks. So you're gonna be able to update that really soon. Um, I'm not sure if it's the new Nexus 7 and the original Nexus 7. I'm not sure if it's both of them. We'll see when that kind of comes around the road. Also, um, Google Play editions will get in the coming weeks, but everything's kind of saying in the coming weeks. Um, Motorola also said they're gonna upgrade their devices as well too, to 5.0 in the coming weeks as well too. And everyone else has pretty much kind of said they're looking, developing, planning, HTC, Samsung, um, and many uh, LG and the other manufacturers out there are mentioning, yeah, we'll, we'll see when it's gonna come around. The best thing I can say with that is, is really just pay attention to their blog, their tweets and such, and go to their support site to see when they're gonna be releasing it. And then also pay attention to Carrier too, because your Carrier does have to approve the updates before the updates get released out here, at least in the United States. If you have an unlocked device, you're probably gonna get a little bit quicker. So those are the announcements today with everything coming from Google. And sort of my thought process with this, especially with the way they announced it, it seems like they, they kind of just announced it on a blog. They didn't hold an event or anything like that. So they're not as, I think hopeful uh, for a, a large consumer push for this with a large consumer, like average consumer sort of picking these things up. It's definitely more so on the enthusiasts, the techies, the tech reviewers, the tech bloggers and such that are really gonna jump on to using this. I think that's kind of 
the people that they're kind of targeting and the developers of course are targeting as well too. I think the Nexus player does have a chance to sort of be disruptive in there and kind of get itself in there a little bit. But I think the other devices are clearly like, uh, it's clearly Google is kind of, kind of putting out a stabilizer. That's what I, I kind of kind of want to call it here. Somebody else kind of put out something that sort of become a standard. They kind of put out the stabilizer these days. So the Nexus used to be the standard where you would make you know, other manufacturers would try to make the devices up to. And it seems like that changed kind of after the Galaxy Nexus. When Samsung started coming out with the Galaxy S2, it kind of seemed that Samsung was putting out the standard while a lot of other manufacturers were sort of making their devices and they were kind of looking at what Samsung did and trying to base their stuff on there, their hardware, their features and stuff. And this is just an Android development an Android space I'm sort of talking with here. And they're sort of kind of, Samsung was sort of the flagship and the standard bearer. And then Google will sort of put out a stabilizer, sort of a middle of the road device where everybody can kind of have at least a decent Android experience. I feel like the Nexus 4 and the Nexus 5 and now the Nexus 6 is still, is kind of doing that where in this case, Samsung is the, you know, Fablet King and sort of Google sort of put out sort of a stabilizer where, hey, if you're going to make a Fablet, it's got to be this way. You want to develop, we want the Fablet to kind of be this way. And that's what kind of the Nexus 6 is. So it's very interesting how that sort of shift where the Nexus used to be the standard. And really for a long time now, it's sort of come down a ways a little bit. It's sort of being the stabilizer, sort of the middle of the road where, where you shouldn't go below in terms of making an Android smartphone. Now, in terms of the Nexus, um, in terms of the Nexus player, that's definitely a, a target looking at, you know, what Amazon's done with the Fire TV and sort of saying, all right, you do that with the Fire TV. This is, if ever, people want to make devices like this, let's at least put out some type of stabilizer, sort of standard, so other manufacturers kind of base their stuff on there because really these players are sort of kind of all around, especially the Android-based ones. They have all different interfaces. They jump sort of all around a lot here, just like my hands are sort of jumping around the video. <laughs> but um, Amazon's Fire TV, which is based on Android, they have a very standard, sleek, and nice interface. And I think Google saw that and maybe said, all right, let's put out a similar player too, and let's put our Google experience out and say, hey, if we want you want to make a device like this, you want to develop something like this, at least make something that looks sort of like this. At least they're giving the hand and trying to tell you where to go sort of with the Nexus program. At least that's what I believe here with that. So I've already talked to you long enough. Let's go ahead and just wrap this video up. If you found this to be very helpful, be sure to give it a like and share it around. It definitely helps us out. Also be sure to subscribe to our YouTube page here. Also connect with us on all the social networks and on our main website at bw1.com. The link to our main website and all the social networks is in the description below. And always remember to live your tech world in high definition. Thanks for watching. Thank you.